How you can make the Word of God flesh to you. Welcome to This Word is Your Life with Pastor Alexander Arthur. Today, Dr. Arthur continues his series, The Law of Increase. Whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. Whatsoever is born of God, whatever it is, you have a business, let God give birth to that business. You have a marriage, let God give birth to that marriage. Whatever, whatsoever is born. So what does that mean? It means that I can make sure that the word of God is what I believe. See, it is a believing that gives birth. The word of God that you hear must be believed so you can birth it. And so what I got to do is that if I say that I believe anything, I got to demonstrate that I believe it by what? By giving birth to what I say I believe. But it has to be the word of God. If it's going to be born of God. Which means if God doesn't say it, God doesn't promise it, God doesn't give you his word for it. You cannot accept that thing, believe that thing, because you end up giving birth to Ishmael. You see, God didn't tell Sarah to tell Abraham, go sleep with your maid servant, Hagar. It was the woman's own cooking of the strategy so that they can have a child. And so she told Abraham, hey, you know, Father Abraham didn't say no. <laughs> Father Abraham didn't say no. Now, he said no another time. When the woman told, Sarah told him, let that woman go, then he said no. <laughs> but the first time, the first time, <laughs> What Father Abraham said, had Sarah say, you, know, you go sleep with Hagar. He said, okay, that's, that's a good idea. Let's, let's go do it. Well, now, let us say, send Hagar away. So, no, we can do that. You know, God had to step into Abraham's dream to tell him to, on, to do what his wife was telling him to do. Hello? <laughs> <laughs> he didn't disagree with her, with her when it came to Hagar and the baby. So you can give birth to Ishmael. Anything that God doesn't tell you, if you believe it and you conceive it and you birth it, it may be Ishmael. And that thing can deal with you the rest of your life. God forgives it, and you, but you will have to deal with Israel. Look at what is going on today in, in the Middle East. One night of pleasure. One night of pleasure has gone through thousands of years and they're still dealing with that problem. Well, let's move on. So let's go back to, uh, to uh, Numbers chapter 13. It says, but the man that went up with him said, we be not able to go up. Don't forget what, what Caleb said. Caleb said, we can do it. Let's go now, possess the land. Let's go, and let's go, and we can beat them up. He said, why? How can we do it? Well, because God said so. What well, servant God says that you believe and is born of God overcomes. These people on our hands said, but the man that went up with him said, we be not able to go up against the people. God says you can, you say that you cannot. Do you know that as powerful as God is, those who said they could not, didn't. You think about it. As powerful as God is, those who said 
that we are not able to go up actually didn't get to go up. They didn't get to make it to the promised land. God says that I'm taking you to the promised land. They said that, oh God, you cannot. What we saw there was too much. This is when you make your circumstance bigger than your God. This is when you make the problem that you are faced with bigger than the God that you spend time with. There's no way anything on this earth or in this whole wide universe can oppose God and prevail. There's nothing. There's nothing that opposes God that can, that can prevail against God. And so if you believe the word of God, and you demonstrate by your believing, by doing what God's word says, you will overcome sooner or later. These people said they could not, and so let's go back to Numbers chapter 13, and let's see something here. Let's see, uh, it says, um, okay. Numbers chapter 13. Where do we stop there? Verse what? 31. Okay, let's go back to verse 31. It says, But the men that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. Verse 32. And they brought up an evil report. God considered the report that these people brought the ten people, the report that they brought, God considered that report what? Evil. So an evil report is a report that opposes God's report. And whose report would you believe? An evil report is a report that opposes God's report. And so whose report would you believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. But if you don't believe the report of the Lord, you will you, you believe a report that God describes as what? Evil. Any opposition to God's word, God calls it what? Evil. And so it goes on and it says that verse, uh, where are we now? Verse, verse 32. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto, unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. Now, if it eateth up the inhabitants thereof, how could it possibly be that they live to tell it? <laughs> they are telling them that, that the, the land eateth up the inhabitants. How come you came back? It, that should have been the, the clue to the congregation. Well, if the land eats in the habit, says, well, how come you got here? Did you get me? All 12 of you got back safely. They couldn't get even one to eat. <laughs> Not even one? How did you all escape to get here? But the point is, is that that is what exaggeration is. They are adding up unto it. That's what the Bible says. You read the book of Revelation and you add to it. It will be a curse. A lot of people add to the word of God. You cannot add to the word. Where God's word is mute, be mute there. So in any way, they, they came back with a, to say that the land eats up its inhabitants. Okay? But you made it. And all the people that we saw in it are men of what? A great stature. That is giants. Now, I'm going to say something that I want you to get it. Unless you believe the word of God, you will allow what you face to keep you from doing that word. 
A good example is when it comes to money. If you don't believe the word of God on tithe, any bill can take the tithe money. It can be a bill to go to the beauty shop. That's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> any bill can take the tithe money because you really don't believe it. Especially when God says, okay, this is the only test that I want to test you on. I want to prove you. To prove is to test you. To see whether you will do this because I have already set the ball in motion to supply you the moment you trigger it by the tithe. But if you don't do it, it's because you didn't believe it. If you believe it, it doesn't make a difference how gargantuan, how, how big and large the bill is. It doesn't make a difference. Are you getting this? If you are not sold out on a thing that God has said, anything can be an excuse. If you are not bent on being in church on time, anything can be an excuse. Somebody call, you're talking to them, by the time you checked it, the time has passed in a way. Now I'm saying all this because I was five minutes late in getting here, so Lord, Lord forgive me. Oh, oh, oh. See, the Lord will, will let you. Well, I, I'm convicted, Lord forgive me, in Jesus' name. You should be saying the same thing if you were late and getting here. <laughs> but anyway, I hate to be late. But anyway, this is the point. <laughs> and I forgot the point. <laughs> what was I saying? Yeah, if, if you don't sold out. If you don't sold out nothing. I mean, anything can be an excuse. And what we have to do is to make sure that and understand that it is Satan which, who brings the excuses. God referred to those as reasonings. Lean not onto your own understanding or reasonings. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. So if you believe God, that at 1030 in this house, an angel of the Lord comes to stir up the waters. You see, you read an account in the Bible and it says that at a certain point, every time an angel of the Lord will come and what? Stir up the water and the first person that got in got healed. And there was a man that was laid out next to the pool of Bethesda. And I'm quite sure that as much as he attempted to pull himself into the water, somebody has always jumped in before him. For a good 38 years, nobody had compassion and said, well, let's all back up this time. Let that, this is the 21st year. Let our brother jump in. <laughs> and everybody was thinking about themselves, about their loved ones. But all oh, thanks be unto God. Jesus walked in. God has seen his trials and tribulations and problems and he sent Jesus to that pool. Jesus himself walked there and looked at him and asked him the question, what is it that you want? Of course, he started telling a story. He started saying, that, hey, I want somebody to dump me in here. Oh, I want to be healed. He started talking about the offense of what people had done to him. I've been laying down here for the last 38 years and, 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 and going on and on. And Jesus, Jesus just went straight. What do you want? So I want to be well. He said, take up your bed. That's it. What is the point here? 
And I forgot the point again. <laughs> no excuses. Praise the Lord. I'll keep you still in there. No excuses. But the whole point is that excuses are from the enemy to keep us from believing God. And I'm saying to you this morning that we're going to deal with this uh, spirit of excuses so that we can obey God. The obedience is better than sacrifice. All right, let's go back to uh, good old Numbers chapter 13. Um, and let's go on. The, it says, and all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And then we saw the giants, the sons of Enoch, which come of the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, as, and so we were in their sight. Now, listen. I want to show you something here. I want you to see the exaggeration. Even a further exaggeration. Forget about the fact that the land eats its inhabitants, because if it did, there will be nobody there, including those who went to spy the land. But listen to this. It says that we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. That's a different story. And so we were in their sight. How did they know? How did they know that those people saw them as, as ants? Or grasshoppers. And they, they, they just were trying to make it up an excuse to say, we don't need to go back over there. The whole thing was the devil trying to keep the children of Israel from getting to where God said he was taking them there. So that God can be considered and be, be described as a liar. They left Egypt. They, read, they crossed the Red Sea. They got into the wilderness. Now they're about to get to the promised land. And these people come up with a word to say, we cannot get in there. And imagine how that happened. They would have been caught in between. In between Egypt and the promised land. In between the land, the land of not enough and the land of more than enough. And caught up in the land of barely enough. Enough to eat for the day. The manna. And my point is, is that sometimes that's what Satan likes to put people. Hanging them in between two opinions. Elijah said on Mount Carmel when he faced the 400 prophets of Baal. As he was talking to the children of Israel. But let's look at the first Kings chapter 17. Verse 18, there about. Is it I want? That's not what I want. <clears throat> and you will see that sometimes we get caught up in between two opinions, in between two situations. And, the, and, and quite often when that happens, we cannot make any headway. Uh, we're talking about the Lord helping us make a way. And this is what happens. So 1 Kings uh, chapter, what did I say? 17. Okay. Uh, let me look at a verse here. Um, that's what I want. 18. Go to chapter 18. Let's see. Let's start from verse 20. Uh, so Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together on Mount Carmel. Okay? Verse 21. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt you between two opinions? Between the land of more than enough and the land not enough. How long will you halt between you know, putting your one foot in the world and one foot in, in the kingdom of God. How long will you hold between faith and doubt or fear? 
How long will you halt in giving and not giving? When are you going to be so fully persuaded that you have won over, the word of God has won you over, that there's no retreat for you? How long would you halt between two opinions? God's and the devil's. Make up your mind. Decide today. Do you go to church or you stay home? Do you give tithes or you keep your money? Do you forgive or don't forgive? Do you love or not love? Are you easily offended or you can never be offended? Oh, choose between today, choose between two opinions. Which opinion would you surrender to? And if the Lord be God, follow him. If you believe that God is the one that is God, follow him. When you follow him, when he takes a step, you take the same step. He turns right, you turn right. You follow him. And another word for that is obey him. And he says, but if Baal, if Baal, Baal, you know, another, Baal is the lord of the flies. Can you imagine people who worship the lord of flies? As annoying and irritating it is when you're grilling <laughs> and the flies come around your meat and you try to smack them here and there. Uh, can you imagine worshiping the Lord of Flies? But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. Like you all haven't answered me not a word. <laughs> then said Elijah unto the people, I, even I, only remain a prophet of the Lord. But Baal's prophets are 450 men. It says, for 450 against one. Just like with the spies, 10 against two. So there's a certain behavior that we human beings have that we go with numbers. Right now, if a church had 10,000 of people, we think that's where the anointing is. We allow numbers to make us think that's where God resides. Now, there can be a church with 10,000 people and the anointing, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that. All I'm saying is that we don't go by numbers. We go by the word of God. What are they preaching? What are they teaching? What is being said from the pulpit? Is it human dogma? Is it philosophy? Is it the doctrine of denomination? Or are, really, are they really giving out the word? And challenging the people who come regularly on how they are to take this word and, and work on it so they can see evidence of God's promises in their lives. Oh, praise the Lord. Now, verse 23. He tells them to do all of that. Verse 24. I like this. And so you call on the name of your gods. See, this is the showdown on Man Carmel. That you, you, every once in a while, you can have a showdown. You can have a showdown and say, well, you know, let me show you how you do the showdown here. You, you have, these are the bills. Hello? And this is the tithe. You all stop laughing there. Okay, all right. This is the showdown. I'm going to show you. Read this and I'll tell you. We, we can, it's, I'll call you on the name of your gods and I will call on the name of the Lord and the God answered by fire. Let him be God. Oh, and I love it. And all the people answered and said, it is, like you said, it's what? It is well spoken. Okay. If, if, if the God who answers this prayer, the, 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 the bills, oh, these bills can never be paid. They're, they're huge. They're, they're controlling your every thought and every uh, mind, every, whatever it is going on with your life, and you come over here, and it's a tithe. And you say, well, Lord, I thank you. I believe that if I sow this tithe, that I will have answers. 
based upon what your word says in Malachi chapter 3. All right. So now, there's a showdown. And you say, well, this is what I've spoken. I'm making my choice for the tithes. Now, you're letting God know. You're not going to halt any longer between two opinions. Now, don't get me wrong. These two are two realities. Don't ever think that the debt or the bills are not a reality. If you don't think they're a reality, you just keep on staying in that house three more months without paying. <laughs> that is a reality. But then there is a higher reality. Whatsoever is born of God. Your money, your money is born of God, while silver is born of God, overcometh the world and its bills. And so you say to the Lord, Lord, I'm no longer going to be in between. I'm no longer hold between two opinions. I have made my choice. To receive a copy of today's message in its entirety, write to us at Word of Life Christian Center International. When you write, be sure to include the name of today's message and your choice of either an audio or video copy. CDs and audio tapes are $5 and video cassettes or DVDs are 10 Well, I'm so happy you were able to join us today and uh, I believe that something was said on this program that really reached your heart. Because that's really the purpose of uh, this program in such a way that the word of life, uh, which is the word of God, will change your life. And so we pray always that those who watch this program, that they are being changed inside out. And I pray that that happened to you on this broadcast. Now, let me also say to you that if there's ever a need for you to uh, request prayer, uh, call to the office. Uh, you'll see a number scroll at the bottom of the screen. And we will certainly make sure that uh, we find a way to, uh, to pray and intercede on your behalf for that which uh, you believe in God uh, for a change uh, for the better for you. And so we love you. God bless you. Keep on watching us. And uh, I tell you this, that we look forward to for you joining us every time that we come on the air. And may God bless you in the name of Jesus. For Jesus is Lord. And with all you're getting, get understanding. For the word of life changes lives, and love never fails. Be blessed. Amen. The word of life changes lives.